Okay, good morning. Um, my name is Zafar. We're going to start um, communication skills uh, in business, and we're going to talk about the L01, uh, know how businesses communicate. So L, um, learning outcome, one, uh, when we need to know how the business communicates. So there are a lot of uh, things we need to look at is 1.1 communication models 1.2 communication business communication and 1.3 making communications effective and then we'll go through each of those in turn okay uh, first of all let's look at the communication models right there are different models of communication uh, by models of communication we mean how do we communicate right there's a model called a simple model of communication which is um, a sender sending a message and then it's received by a receiver. So the feedback uh, sent by the receiver is received by the sender and coded, and then it goes into a circle. So first of all, there is a sender who sends a message. Message is uh, recorded, message is uh, received. It's uh, coded and given a feedback, okay? And it goes into round again. So therefore the representation of um, a process the model is a representation of a process by which uh, the system, rather than a simple, it represents subjective and it goes into the uh, orientation of models and so on. Okay, Models of communication, the definition, what we call method of communication, it's a method of communication process by a figure or a, or a visual method. It's uh, practical. It can be practical in nature, it can be visual in nature, it's, um, uh, it can be in symbols, it can be in pictures, the message can be uh, easily understood uh, because if it's in a you know, picture form, it's um, easily understood by people. If it's um, a sign language, maybe not understood by uh, people. So message can be in any shape or form, particularly if it's in a, it's in a, if it's in a picture it will be understood very uh, well rather than, and very well. And so the people who are receiving these messages, they can uh, understand you know, what they mean by picture or symbols, okay? The type of models, communication models, there is um, different types of uh, models that are, uh, there's one Aristotle's model, Laswell's model, Warren's model, uh, and so on, okay? So let's talk about the Aristotle model. Uh, it mainly focuses on uh, speaker and speech. It can be broadly divided into five uh, primary elements, speaker, speech, sp occasions, audience, and effect. Speaker has the most important role in it, and it's the only one active. It's the speaker's role to deliver a speech to the audience. The role of the audience is to listen, and um, they are influenced by the speech, which makes the communication one way. So the speaker sends a message to the receiver and the receiver receives it, listens to it. And that's called Aristotle model receives by the recipient and it's one way communication. According to the model, the speech must be prepared so that the audience must be persuaded or influenced from the speech. And this model was highly used to develop public speaking skills and create a propaganda. For example, by politicians, by traders. So the Aristotle model is mainly communication by the uh, uh, sender, whereby the um, receiver receives that message. It's one-way communication. Mainly, it talks about the public uh, speaking. Mainly, that model rests upon or uses uh, a public uh, speaking kind of um, speech. Okay. So as you can see from this uh, model, Aristotle's model. Uh, you, you are one of the speakers, for example, and you send a speech, an audience are there and they listen, and the effect is by listening to that, okay? It's a skill of propaganda, in other words. So that's a, the, prob the model is used for developing public speaking uh, skills to create some kind of propaganda, okay? Laswell's model, uh, this is another model uh, who, um, this model uses five components so for example, five components are who communicates, says what, i.e. the message, in what channel, i.e. the medium, to whom, i.e. the receiver, and with what effect is the effect, okay? So the model has five components, which is used 
to convey your message. The five components of this message are control analysis, i.e. who uh, controls or who helps the sender to have all this power, content analysis, i.e. what's in it, what kind of uh, message are you uh, affecting, media analysis, i.e. which medium are you using, speech medium or any other medium, audience are the people who are uh, receiving uh, this message, i.e. who are you targeting, which is the population that you're talking, are you um, talking uh, to the general public or specific people in a group, and what is uh, the effect of that, how do you predict the effect of the message over the target population to be exploited. Okay. Then the third model, last one's model, after that there's a one model or linear model of communication, which um, means uh, the, the communication is um, designed to develop the effective communication between sender and receiver, which is um, the model. It's a model that deals with the various concepts like information source, transmitter, noise, channel, message, receiver, decodes, and encodes. Okay, the sender sends a message and um, to the receiver through a technology called telephone, for example, or by message or by WhatsApp or telegraph, and the sender converts that message into code and uh, to understand the message, and the message is then sent in code through a medium. So for example, when you're transferring or transmitting tele, um, telex, for example, that message is decoded and sent back to the, um, the recipient in a language that they understand. Okay, the receiver then, i.e., the receiver then decodes the message before understanding it and interpreting it. Then the channel um, can be, have a noise, and the receiver might have um, not have the capacity to decode, which might cause the problems if they haven't got the technology, for example, if they don't know how to decode, if they don't know what they are, the message is, then they'll have a problem in, um, in sending or communicating that model. The fourth model is Berlow's model. The Berlow's model of communication uh, takes into account the emotional aspects of the message, i.e. The, the, uh, the emotional method is the um, person talking to you might be one person or a group of people, whereas uh, S, so if SMCR, uh, so let's talk about the SMCR, which is the Berlow's model of communication depends on the SM. CRS is, stands for source, M for message, C is for the channel, and R is for the receiver. The Berlow's model of communication is based on these. The source, the, the source is the uh, where you might you know talk to a one person or a group of uh, people, and the message. Uh, what is the message? The message is the information. Uh, which is thought to be sent by the source and which must be um, coded or it must be a language that the understanding or the sender must uh, send to the person who received that message should be able to understand that message and what channel is, is this message thrown? What channel is this message being communicated by? Is it a telegraph? Is it a newspaper, radio uh, or poster? What kind of message is it? Uh, posted through and the receiver is the person or uh, people or the um, uh, you know communication um, process whereby the the audience is the final receiver of that message so the Berlus model is based on smcr okay then the other model with uh, we can have a look at um, shram's model uh, this uh, model again uh, is um, based on a source, model of communication is based on a source and to the destination information. He says that information is of no use unless and until it's carefully put into words and conveyed to other people. It's um, a model, it's a model that encodes play a very important role because it initiates the process of communication by converting the, the thought into content. And the model suggests that the encoding and decoding are the two most important parts of communication process. 
Okay, so these are just the theoretical models that we can have a look. And the other final or one or two other models, we look at the Riley's model. Again, this model uh, is indicates the communicator emerges as part of a larger pattern who sends message in accordance with the expectation and actions of other persons and group within the same social structure. It's um, a model that is true in the case of receiver in the communication process, both the communicator and receiver are part of an overall societal system. And the model clearly shows that the communication is a two-way process. So there is two-way process rather than a, a single or one-way process whereby the message is sent uh, to a group, then the group sends the message back and so on, okay? So this model is an improvement on the previous model in the sense that it's a, a two-way communication, okay? Then we come into another model, which is the contemporary model. Uh, this model suggests that there are um, you know, different type of communication or style of communication, which incorporates communicator, i.e. the person sending the message and somebody uh, encodes it, that information goes to the recipient, decodes it, suggests um, uh, something else and comes back to the original communicator. It's a circle uh, whereby there's also a patient feedback and the person uh, improves on the model, okay, or improves on the message sent um, through a medium to the receiver, then they send back to the original uh, communicator and then they can change or um, review it and so on. Okay, so these are just a few uh, communication, uh, theoretical communication models that we uh, have come across. Now let's look at the business communication. Now business communication comes in different formats. It comes in a written um, format, written language. Some, you know, it's a permanent written language is a perm. It can be a permanent record by writing. It can be a permanent uh, writing by recording it. It can be a permanent writing by, um, you know, um, you know, sending uh, something, um, a message. So the message whereby we use the written record for uh, different purposes. The main purpose is uh, it stays permanent. It becomes uh, legal. So it's, uh, it can be sent to many people at the same time. And there are, um, make sure that the, the written message provides detailed information. It provides um, information that many people can communicate. It's an official language. Uh, used. So the communication model or the writing um, piece of information, it's uh, advantageous to use um, for different people and it can be communicated to many people at the same time. It expressively right or wrong things so you can people can see it quickly and uh, mainly it's used um, in different, um, it becomes a legal uh, document. In other words, when it's writing, the main disadvantages are that it may not, um, you know, it may not uh, be uh, possible um, to provide an instant uh, feedback, right? So people will read it, people will take time to digest it, and then they will um, respond to it. So this is quite a big disadvantage because people will not immediately respond, right? It um, may not be required for all the level of employees, for example, it's purely formal uh, message, hence uh, lacks personal touch. So informality, it doesn't have um, an informality. It, the language is used formal, formal language in when we are writing documents. Okay, it can the communication can come in verbal format. The verbal form you mean be talking, like um, for example, um, you know when you're talking to somebody. Uh, by, uh, you know, verbal communication, whereby the written record is not written, okay? So it's um, a quick way of disseminating information. It saves time, it's um, clear, for example, it's, um, you know, you can get instant uh, feedback, for example. The main advantage is it's very clear, time saves, it's quick, and it adds personal touch to your communication, it's effective, it's um, you know very um, individual, for example, it's personal in other words, but the main uh, disadvantage 
it's an uh, informal language it's uh, people can use this um, to their um, informality it, sometimes it's um, misunderstood and it's not really recommended where you have um, a lot of um, messages to get through or long messages to get through for example if you are using uh, or if you want to get through a legal document that this is not the language uh, or this is not the communication channel that you use you use the writing or written method of uh, communication and also it doesn't stay permanent so these are the main disadvantages of the verbal communication model okay then we've got uh, a visual communication model visual is will be used by pictures by symbols by um, you know so this this way the the main advantage is it's um, the pictures stands for itself for example it uh, captures attention it's uh, easy to understand it um, simplifies the message rather than um, create a lot of um, you know writing it's um, you know conveys the message very quickly there's a language free barrier or barrier free language but the main disadvantage is uh, is, is uh, sometimes it's complex uh, ideas are difficult to convey to other people what this medium says to them. Well, picture, maybe not everybody understands picture as well. So therefore it's disadvantage. However, it's costly to produce because uh, you need to produce multiple copies of such communication. It's costly to disseminate uh, this type of information uh, because it may take a lot of space, um, you know, may take a lot of um, uh, disk space, for example, because it might be heavy in, in um, you know, uh, in storage or so it's also a complex um, ideas are not the way to send uh, through this medium, for example, you know, you can't, um, you know, you can't show your, your trend or comparison in a particular manner, i.e. comparison, you can't show in pictures. So therefore, it's, it's a disadvantage. Okay. So sometimes it's very, um, the visual is very good. For example, it, it simplifies the message. It goes across the audience. It's very easily understood, but it's sometimes, however, it's complex um, to, to convey the message through this type of medium. There is no interaction of the audience and the communicator leaves no room for feedback. There's no feedback and it's costly to disseminate information, visual information. Okay, so we will discuss visual information. We looked at verbal information or communication, and then we did looked at the written communication. Okay, so these are the three types. Another, uh, by looking at um, other model of communication, we come back. We come to the electronic communication, which is quite um, useful these days, which is very easily used and commonly used. Okay, so the one point four uh, looks at electronic communication. The main advantage for uh, electronic communication is very easily um, and instant in, in sending information, receiving information. It uh, keeps a record, of course, uh, whatever you talk or whatever you send, uh, whatever um, you write. So it's a permanent record in, when we send emails or faxes. It's, uh, you can send a lot of information on uh, this um, you know, on this, uh, this type of electronic uh, communication, we can send a large amount of uh, storage by this. And it's very speedy. It's, um, you know, very quick, very easily managed uh, way of communication. You can store it um, as you like, according to your own, um, you know, capacity, according to your own um, facility, according to whatever a person has the storage. So there's a lot of uh, uh, advantages in using the electronic um, communication. However, it's um, sometimes uh, it's prone to confidentiality breach. And uh, also, you know, uh, there may be internet problems, there may be a communication breakdown, i.e. the electronic, um, you know, electric uh, failure, for example, or the internet's not working or the connection's not very strong. So the information uh, can get lost um, or it can get delayed. Uh, not everybody has access to the internet. Not everybody has the internet uh, at their home or their office. However, 
Um, this is reducing, of course, in practice, but there are countries who have a power failure and the information is not, um, you know, uh, communicated quickly uh, via this um, model or this, you know, this medium, but things are improving. Okay, sometimes costs can, uh, for maintaining uh, this type of equipment, okay, because, um, you know, for certain uh, reasons, uh, maybe um, the connections are uh, not very common in that particular part of the world. So the cost of setting up uh, is, is very high. Okay. Then we're coming on to formal and informal communication. Formal communication is uh, where we have to uh, write document, example, for, uh, formality, where we need to permanent codes uh, the the formal communication is something discipline approach we look at the you know uh, documents that are need a lot of um, models that are used every day record permanently easily communication and we need to look at those documents with efficiency so therefore we must maybe show that these are formally communicated or the formal communication model is used rather than informal. Informal is where we um, talk freely uh, between ourselves, free flow of communication. There's a free flow of communication. You need to make sure the informal communication is some, uh, you know, there's um, provides uh, flexibility of uh, talking between uh, people. It's, um, you know, very complex and uncomfortable uh, things can be conveyed when we are talking informal language. It provides an alternative uh, mechanism for interaction with colleagues. It uh, improves inter um, personal communication or personal relation, interpersonal relationship when we are using informal language. However, the formal language is used in offices, for example, in writing and making sure that the uh, people you know, who are, um, you know, communicating formally, they, um, they understand, but there are other channels of communication, the informal, like the friendly language or the free flow of information where the information free flows freely. It's used in a, in a unofficial um, channel. It's used in informally. So therefore we need to be able to make sure that the formal and informal communication is differentiated between ourselves and where it's um, you know useful okay how can we make um, communication effective now there are uh, things that we can use a model like effective communication which is uh, called c7c's by jyoti et al 2011 this model for example uh, whereby um, we use completeness concreteness courtesy correctness, clarity, consideration, and conscious um, conciseness. So let's, uh, let's look what we mean by uh, these seven Cs. Clarity means it should be very clear, i.e. it should be specific, i.e. the model should be, um, you know, exact. It's not a uh, gobbledygook, it's not confusing. It's got to say what it is supposed to say. It should be using exact words uh, to convey the message. So very clear message, short, sharp, shock. You know, it should clearly say what it intends to say. Nothing um, vulgar or nothing uh, um, confusing. Okay. Completeness means um, the communication must be complete in a sense that it should convey all the facts required by the audience. The sender of the communication, the sender of the message must take into consideration the receiver's mind set and convey the message fully and accordingly. So it's the message should be complete, not half. Uh, and the other, uh, you leave the message to the receiver to guess. No, the message should be complete. Uh, it should be also concise, means the communication, which must be communicated. It must be uh, conveyed in at least possible words so that it's not um, confusing. It's not really um, problematic, right? It's um, very precise, very concise very um, short and sweet, 
um, consideration, effective uh, communication must be um, taking the audience into consideration, i.e. the audience's viewpoints. It should be taking their viewpoint, their background, their mindset, their level, and then the message should be uh, completed or the modified in all <clears throat> for the minds of the people. You should really, when you're talking, you should um, understand what the mind of the people, how, what's the capability of the audience, what do they need, and um, you know what type of audience you're talking. So you should uh, take the message, you should take the message in order that do you take their uh, background into account by sending this message so this is consideration uh, you should consider their background the level of uh, understanding and their level of uh, you know interest for example okay and concrete the lastly is the concreteness the concreteness means uh, particular and clear rather than fuzzy and general it should not be uh, general it should be specific okay um, it's not me misin interpreted for example it should be i.e clear to the you know clear to the purpose and clear to the uh, what you are trying to say courtesy of course courtesy means but it should be polite it should be um, you know the sender uh, should be sending the message to the people where it's um, judicious where it's uh, enthusiastic where it's uh, sincere it's very um, you know it should be received with um, uh, welcoming eye, for example, it should be reflective. Okay, and the last one is the correctness, i.e., the information should be correct. Uh, it should be, i.e., in punctuation terms. It should be, um, you know, having probably full stops or whatever. You know, it should have, um, you know, no grammatical errors. In other words, in communication, right? So the grammatical errors should be. Um, it should be free from that, okay? And the correct message, has, um, when it's a correct message, it has a great impact on the audience uh, by the reader. So therefore the seven C's model, when we are sending communication, we must make sure that it's, um, you know, seven C's are taken into consideration, i.e. the message should be, you know, straightforward, it should be complete, it should be concise, uh, it should be um, sent to the people um, in accordance to their level of understanding and so on. Okay, so therefore, we must make sure that um, you know, when we're sending message, we take these into consideration. Okay, then we come on some kind of uh, barriers to communication, i.e. what's stopping us, what's stopping the sender, um, you know, and what are the problems in sending these communication. Now, there are distortion, in other words, what are the distortions uh, on the way of sending messages? There are different, um, um, for example, there are different problems when we are uh, communicating. Uh, for example, time lag, barriers to effective communication are time lag. For example, when you're sending the information from uh, this, then it may have a bit of a, a time lag by the time it's received by the a receiver, um, maybe there's a, a you know a kind of disturbance. There's kind of distractions. There's kind of um, problems when you're sending a message. Okay, so let's look at the 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 barrier. Okay, it can be barrier like language um, uh, language barrier, for example, um, where employees belong to different countries and speak different languages uh, in a multinational con consideration or multinational organization, there's a language barrier. So the barrier, when we talk in uh, communication, the language barrier can uh, delay the communication by the receiver. So therefore we must uh, be aware of this, okay? If there are say time barrier or time lag, for example, if the employees are too busy with their daily activities and don't find time for creative and innovative um, solutions, that can uh, create a barrier. Noise barrier, that is um, when employees are not too confident about the future of the organization because of the external rumors, okay? Or distance, uh, there's a lack of, um, uh, you know, distance is very important because when people or employees who are placed um, far away from their base location show less inclinations towards organization activities because they are not, uh, 
uh, watched or by they're not uh, communicating at a very short distance. So there's a barrier between themselves and the communication person who communicates and so on. Okay, so therefore we must be able to make sure that our communication barriers are um, broken down. Okay, um, a disability, for example, a, a called barrier on a disability, a person with a disability in the leg will not be able to participate in all the activities of the organization. So that's a barrier, okay? So um, there are too many questions, for example, when people are asking too many questions, um, you know, in, in, in a job situation or whatever, and there's no, um, you know, the confidence, there's no showing of confidence in the strategy of the organization. So therefore, uh, you know, that's a barrier as well. So um, there are different types of barriers between communication um, and the, um, the person sending these communications. Okay, so therefore, this is very important. When we are talking about the effective communication, we are um, making sure, we make sure that the barriers are broken down. Okay, so the main barriers, in other words, are distance, time, uh, noise, for example, pollution, noise, pollution, you know, <clears throat> distance, lack of interest, and so on. Okay, so a quick runover um, of the communication models. Uh, we talked about... Um, you know, different types of communication models. Uh, in, in your um, Moodle, you can look at these um, notes and you can read more about these uh, communication models or we have a list of figures that you can go through. We discussed uh, four or five models of communication. Then we talked about the seven Cs and then there we talked about the barriers to communication, okay? Now, what you could do really is, you know, um, for example, if we got a situation here, for example, here, a situation is situation and conversation, uh, a conversation about uh, sending uh, 30 pound gift vouchers with the free toner. The customer is delighted with the service and conversation with customer agent, you know. So you can uh, make sure that the communication barrier is broken down by sending some uh, kind of, um, you know, good uh, gestures, Okay, by feeding back to them, by sending them gifts, for example, and then making a positive image uh, through the communication and so on. Okay, um, so let's get back on uh, to the learning uh, outcome first. Learning outcome basically, it was very quick uh, run over of the know how businesses communicate. So the businesses communicate. Uh, differently, verbal communication, written communication, they communicate through um, uh, electronically, they communicate through uh, writing, they communicate, you know, through different channels. These days, electronic uh, medium is very commonly used, okay? But it doesn't mean that you don't read, um, you know, their communication models and how do business communicate and what makes business uh, communicate effectively, okay? So you know, that's what we discussed today, a very quick run over. Any questions, um, Yasmin, or is there anybody else who is there? Very quickly, very, um, you know, um, run over of these models of communication. Any, anything, um, that you want to ask me about these models? Are we okay on this? Right, um, yeah. If there are um, no questions, what I'm going to do I, um, I'll, um, I'll uh, stop uh, the recording. And if you have any um, problems or if you have any issues or if you have any uh, questions for me, can you drop uh, an email to me so I can answer that, please? Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye-bye.